Hey, how's it going everybody? I hope you're all doing well. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm the owner of Midwest Woodcraft and I am the one who made your base camp buck saw. I hope you are enjoying your purchase. I thank you very much for supporting our business and I wanted to take just a couple of moments to go over some of the care instructions on this so you can get the longest life possible out of your saw. Okay, so when you get your saw all unpacked, you're going to notice there's all these pieces. kind of looks like a puzzle. And uh, it may seem a little bit confusing at first, but it's going to make perfect sense when you get it all together the first time. It's going to be very simple, so don't worry. Uh, so you'll notice you have your two handles, side pieces. You have your cross member, that's the middle piece. And then our paddle and windlass, and that's going to supply the tension. We also have included in the package a 24-inch Baco dry wood blade. Uh, this will eventually wear and need replaced with time. You can get those on our website, midwestwoodcraft.net, or you can just look around on Amazon, eBay, or on Google and find a retailer for that item. I prefer the dry wood blade because whenever you're cutting firewood for camp and things like that, it works very well. So what we're going to do is, is start putting this bad boy together and it's going to work the same whether or not you have the 21, the new 21 inch version or the, this 24 inch version like we have here. The only difference will be the blade size and the lanyard size or the rope size on your windlass whenever we go to change that and we'll talk about that later as well. So I like to lay this thing down. And you're going to want to be looking for your far holes here on the little tabs of your saw blade. The very far hole, you'll line that up with the hole in your saw. And take one of your included screws, machine screws, put it down there facing down. You could put it underneath facing up if you wanted as well. If you wanted to stick it up underneath, up this way. And that works better for you, you can do that too. But I usually just do it like this, let gravity work for me. Put it in like so. And then I'll put my cross member up here. And then take your windlass, slide it over the top of your handles. And now you got most of the battle won here. Before I put any tension, I like to make sure everything is kind of nice and straight. And then I'll just kind of flip everything to the side and give it a few turns. And this, uh, I can't really tell you it's going to be 15 turns because this new paracord will stretch as you go. Uh, so those turns will increase over time. And, and this paracord is, and the blade are the perishable items on this. So they will eventually need replaced. This paracord will eventually wear and probably break. And your blade will need replaced. So once you get a little bit of tension on there, then you can kind of stand it up and work with it. Now it's not going to go anywhere. You can make sure your, your screws are in there good, everything's in there good. Then you can just kind of go ahead and start tightening it up. And you're going to have to play with that tension a little bit, just get used to it. You want it nice and tight to where you don't have any racking back and forth. You don't want the frame to rack. If you put one hand on the top of this handle, one hand on the bottom of this handle, and work it back and forth, see we have very little movement there. That's pretty good. I'm going to give it one more turn. And it's good and solid. You heard that little click. It kind of slid into position. And now it's rock solid. Then once we get that all done, I can take and put my wing nuts on here. These will stay on with the tension of the blade. I've done a lot of work without putting these on here. So if you lose one, it's not necessarily the end of the world. I do recommend having them on there, of course, but with the grooves and the threads of the screws and the, the uh, how thin the blade is, that will kind of lock in there without these wing nuts. So if you happen to lose one in the field, it's not the end of the wor world. You still can uh, use the saw. All right, so that's it. That's all there is to it. It's nice and solid, ready to build cam or cut some firewood. So another thing I mentioned was eventually your rope on your windlass is going to wear and break. So you're going to need to replace that. I use 550 paracord. I recommend a higher quality paracord. 
And then whenever I cut this off for the for the 24 inch base camp buck saw, your length on your quarters will be 51 inches. For your 21 inch buck saw, it will be, you guessed it, 48 inches. It'll be just three inches shorter. So for your 24 inch buck saw, you're gonna want a 51 inch rope on your windlass. For the 21 inch buck saw, you will need a 48 inch rope on your windlass. This particular one here is the 24 inch, so this is a 51 inches. Whenever I cut this off and burn it, I try not to, to flare this out too much, mushroom head this out too much, or it won't fit in the holes here. And then you just work that in there. So, now that we got that through, we just tie a, tie a double fisherman's knot. We're just going to take one end of our windlass here, place the other end over the top of it, make a loop. When we make that loop, I make a fish shape over the top here. Bring the top end of that tail, top side of that tail, down around everything, and then back up through the middle of this X. I have a more detailed video on this on the channel. If you want to look through my series on uh, knots, hitches, and bends, I have a video on this knot, and I go through it in a lot more detail. So we'll do it one more time. Go around the hole. We have this end hanging free here from our first knot. We just bring it around, bring the top end of the tail around everything, and then all the way up through the middle. And that's going to give us this nice, neat coil pattern. This is a very strong bend for joining rope together, so this isn't going to break. It's not going to uh, deteriorate the strength of your cordage too much. And it looks nice once it gets on there. You can trim the edges up if you'd like. Wrap it up. And you're back in business. Another thing to keep in mind is the components are made of wood. You will notice some wear on the back side of your paddle for, for your windlass over time as you torque this down. Nothing to be concerned about. You'll, it'll wear a little groove in here. It happens pretty much all of them. Uh, if you get scratched up, things get scratched up a little bit, or dried out over time, gets left in the rain, out in the elements, or something like that, or you just have a really rough weekend with your saw, we got a little scratch on mine right here. Um, I just take some teak oil, um, the cheap teak oil from Home Depot, uh, or any home improvement store, or mineral oil or even like a fixing wax product, woodsman's wax, something like that. I wouldn't be afraid to use on this either. I wouldn't use a varnish coating or anything like that because that will eventually flake off. I treat these with teak oil. So these, this dark finish will get a light surface burn before I stain it. I stain it with a, a dark stain blend that I kind of come up, myself, up with myself. I mix three or four different dark stains together to come up with a little bit of a unique color. And then uh, once that's all dried and cured, I will give them several coats of teak oil. And that gives them the nice, nice finish that they have. So if you need to really work on this, like this scratch here is a little bit deep, I might take a piece of steel wool with some linseed oil and just kind of lightly sand that little area there. And after a little bit, you'll never even notice it. This will get scratched up the more you use it, but I think they look awesome with a little bit of wear. You take good care of these, you should be handing these down to the next generation. I'm really proud of these saws, and I'm gonna quit talking. We're gonna go put this to work. Okay, so we got us a smaller log here. We're gonna get the little brother, the 21 inch base camp buck saw out, and see how he does on here. You just really got to let the saw do the work. 
A lot of folks will say them first few strokes, you have a lot of bouncing. Sometimes you have trouble getting your curve. But if you just lightly start out and get that curve started, get that groove started, and then just put very light pressure on the saw. I'm barely even pushing down on the saw at all. I'm letting the weight of the frame carry it through the wood. And I'm just trying to use the full length of the blade the best as I can. I'm not getting crazy. I'm not exerting myself too much. And as you can see, I could cut a much larger piece than this. But would that really be efficient? Do you really need a much larger piece than this when you're out camping for firewood or for anything else? So I usually keep my pieces a little bit shorter so they're easier to split with a smaller axe. Keep all your limbs out of the way as you're cutting. We're getting close. Now, as you can see, I talked my way all the way through that. Not out of breath, I didn't work too hard. Let the saw do most of the work. Didn't take too long. I could have really sped up and really powered my way through it and went a little bit quicker, but then you're gonna wear quicker. You're not gonna get as much done in the long run. So just let the saw do most of the work. It'll eat right through it. Uh, this 21 inch is really working out great. I'm really happy with this. But anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. I thank you again for your purchase, and I hope you enjoy your Midwest Woodcraft Bucksaw.